Well, I was not expecting to sit down here after the Wrexham Stockport County game to do my match review and for it to be the result that it ended. So yeah, Wrexham have lost 5-0 to Stockport County this afternoon at Edgerty Park. Now, to just address the elephant in the room, obviously I'm sat here doing a match review 10 minutes after the game. I couldn't get a ticket because, let's be honest, 900 tickets and the demand for tickets for this game were through the roof. I couldn't get a ticket and obviously I couldn't stream it because I'm in the UK and the blackout rule means I couldn't stream it. And to be honest, I'm not gonna pay to listen to the game. I'm just gonna give my raw thoughts what I think about the 5-0 scoreline, what other fans are thinking, and what can we really gather from this game. So before we get into today's video, if you're looking for all the best Wrexham City content, I'm sure after this game you're probably not looking for it, but if you are looking for the best Wrexham content, get down there, click the red subscribe button, we're on the road to 20k, and let's get talking about this 5-0 battering against Stockport County. Before anything as well, before we get talking about the game, I just want to highlight the lineups. Obviously, Wrexham FC, we came into it with a normal lineup, you know, the only one downside being Ollie Palmer dropped out of the starting 11. Sam Dolby had come in because obviously Palmer had opened up that he's been struggling with knee injuries. But apart from that, it's fully strengthened. You know, back three of Boyle, Toza and Hayden. The wing backs being McLean and Barnett. You know, the same back five that we started with for the majority of this season. The midfield of Elliot Lee, Tom O'Connor and Luke Young. And obviously the front two of Mullen and Dolby. So you can't really put the blame on us having a couple of players out. Unlike Stockport County, who did actually have a couple of players who were missing from their starting 11 today. Nick Powell, who Wrexham were interested in. I'm sure they had a wing-back as well. Noyle, I think it was, who wasn't involved today. And it seemed like we caught Stockport County on the game of their life, and it seemed like they did just absolutely beat the living hell out of us. A hat-trick for Isaac Alafe, Louis Barry getting on the score sheet. It sounded like he had a really, really good game, really threatened our defence every time he came forward. And then Paddy Madden finishing off the win with a goal in the last minute. 3-0 at half-time. I think a lot of Wrexham fans are thinking, you know, what's going on? It can't really get any worse. But we've seen we, it did. We lost 5-0. And yes, it's an embarrassing performance, don't get me wrong. But... We could be in a lot worse position. We could be in a Cheltenham Town in the league above who are bottom of the league and haven't scored a goal this season. Yes, I'm not even trying to cover up for anything here. It is a terrible, terrible performance and I do think that there should be some questions asked about it. But the position we are in at the minute, I think we're still in the last playoff spot. Stockport County have jumped up to ninth position. I think this result is going to give us a wake-up call for our next game against Crewe at home next Saturday, who, again, are really on some good form. And if you're going on paper, Crewe sit one place above us in the league, one point ahead of us, scored 21 goals, conceded 14. Wrexham have scored 20 and conceded 20 now after that 5-0 defeat today. So if we're looking ahead to next Saturday, will Parkinson be making changes for in the lineup? If I'm being honest, I don't think he will. We've just been purely outclassed and it's not going to be a long-lasting thing that we're obviously going to get battered every week 5-0. But what you do have to question is the fact that we have conceded 20 goals this season and 15 of those 20 have come in just three games. Stockport County, MK Dons and Swindon Town. So 75% of the goals scored this season have come in three games. So... Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. All I can say is, you know, I'm just bitterly disappointed because obviously there was a lot of hype going into this game. We knew that going into this game, it was probably one of the biggest away days we've got so far this season just because of how close the two teams went in the 21-22 season and how high quality these two teams are. Obviously, you know, Stockport County got a brilliant squad. Wrexham as well have got an amazing squad, but today just showed that they obviously played a level above us and we really did struggle. We really did struggle today and... That's uncharacteristic of Wrexham that we A, concede five and don't score a goal, but B, we get outclassed so heavily like that. And I do think I saw a stat that it was Phil Parkinson's heaviest defeat as a Wrexham manager. Will this make us stronger as a team and as a group? I think it will. I genuinely think it will. And I'm not trying to cover up this 5-0 defeat by getting the positives out of it, but... I believe this can only make us a stronger team. We'll obviously learn from our mistakes. We've seen that we've got outclassed and all we can do is get better from this result. It cannot get any worse against Crew Alexander on Saturday. I'm sure Phil Parkinson will have some right words to say to the team ahead of next week's game against Crew Alexander. I'm sure they won't get any days off this week. I'm sure they'll be going full throttle in training and looking to make up for that heavy defeat today. A couple of people have said that when they were watching this stream, we had a couple of early good chances, but like I said, that counts to nothing when we've just been battered 5-0. On the opinions on how the team played, obviously 
it seemed like they all played bad. You can't really pick out names when the team collectively lost 5-0 today. I saw someone say Toes was at fault for two of their goals, which is disappointing because he's been such a good player for this club. And people are asking for change and people are asking for change in obviously that centre defence mid role. They're screaming out for George Evans to come into that starting eleven and... I said it before, I said I don't think he'll change the team, but in my opinion, I would like to see him change it. We've brought George Evans in, who is definitely a League One quality player. I don't see why we are going to be scared to change things around. Obviously, Tom O'Connor's been brilliant, but it would be nice to see someone who's got the quality of George Evans, whose experience can get everything settled down and can play really well in that defensive midfield role. Offer something maybe different that we don't have in Tom O'Connor, but there's no harm in changing things around. It's not like we're changing out players who are clearly not fit enough to play in League 2. George Evans can play in League 1, we know that. Tom O'Connor can play in League 1, we know that. So I don't understand why we can't maybe change something next week. And I'm not saying they won't, but it will be interesting to see what Phil Parkinson does do. And then you've got to ask the question, have we been too predictable in this game? Have teams finally found out the way in which we play? Because obviously since Phil Parkinson has come in charge, this is our third season. We've played the exact same formation with a team like Stockport County, probably one of the largest budgets in the league, one of the best coaching staffs in the league. They'll have obviously analysed Wrexham really, really well and seen how we play, how we set out the certain tactics, a certain ways in which we play wing play midfield play up front play how we create chances they'll have obviously done their homework and it seems to have worked today although we had 17 shots only four of them were on target and if we're looking at stockport county they had five shots on target scored all five so they were ruthless in front of goal today especially isaac alave who did net that hat trick if there's any stockport county fans listening to this video then let me know in the comment section how you played because obviously i won't see the highlights for a couple of hours now and yeah, just let me know in the comment section how you did play today because it seems like you're on absolute fire and I would not be surprised if we don't see Stockport County going up automatically because obviously they missed narrowly out last year and I think they've had a shaky start so far. If I'm looking at the table now, they're currently sitting ninth in the table, sat on 14 points. It's not over yet. The season is not over after nine games. They'll improve. They'll go from strength to strength as time does go on. Likewise, the Wrexham as well. I mean, we've had a really good start and I think this is just a small blip in the road. I do feel for the 900 odd Wrexham fans that did make the trip to Manchester today. I'm glad that we haven't travelled to Crawley Town and been battered 5-0, but yeah, touch wood, that doesn't happen. But yeah, it's a disappointing day. It sounded like the Wrexham fans were in fine voice in that way and despite is getting absolutely battered. We've seen that someone has said Toza it's quite simply relies on Hayden and Boyle to protect him from tricky players, which we've seen it times and time again with him against, I don't know, Michael Giazzi, for example, where he played for Dover Athletic. He was quick, he was tricky, and he really tested us in the defence. I and mean, I'm right in saying he's got a hat trick or maybe scored two in that game. And it has happened a couple of other times when the opposition have had fast players. They've really hurt Toza, who obviously we know is not the fastest, but Hayden can sort of keep up to him because he's got speed and Boyle, he's not the fastest. But people are singling out Toza because obviously he gets singled out by the opposition and they do target him. But on the other hand, I can think of many different times in which he has done really, really well against other strikers of higher pedigree you know when we played against Sheffield United and when we played Coventry he did really well in those games although we did concede three and three against Coventry three against Sheffield United but I think he's done really well against these players who are obviously playing at higher level it's obviously he just struggles against players who like this person has said are fast on the ball are tricky are skillful alongside Ben Sosa we do have Will Boyle who Yes, he's got a really good reading of the game. He's got a really good mindset when going into these games and can really do a really solid job in the back line. But again, he's not fast. He's probably similar to Toes. He probably does get beat by these tricky players. Isaac Alafe, we know him. He's fast. He's skillful. He scored a hat-trick today. Louis Barry sounded like he ran rings around our defence today. So... Yeah, it is interesting. Do I think he'll change anything next season when it comes to our back line? I think if we go up, yes. I think if we do go up to League One, it will be questions asked if we do do a lot in that back line. I think wing backs were set. We know we're set with our wing backs. James McLean, Ford, Barnett, Mendy, you know, we're solid in that wing back role. But centre defensively, I think we're going to have to get maybe someone a bit younger, someone who can deal with these fast attackers and is, like I said, a bit younger, can add something different to that back line, a bit of youth 
Obviously, we've got it with Clueth, I think, has done really well in the past with players who have got speed. You know, he's young, so he will have, obviously, faster reactions than the older players. I think that was what hurts today, the trickiness of their front line, and it has just been a very, very disappointing day as a Wrexham fan. All eyes are now on Creole Alexander for Saturday. There's a lot of pressure to get a result out of that game. There's not a lot of pressure on Parkinson, etc. It'd be stupid if fans are asking him for to get the sack at this point in the season, but... If we don't get a result against Crew Alexander, that could have a damaging effect on the games to come. We've got some huge, huge games in October. Bradford away, Notts County away, Salford home. Like I said, Crew at the end of September. So we've got some big games coming up and we have not really set ourselves in a position that's great. Obviously, with our 5-0 defeat today, it will have a damaging effect on the squad. But it will be a question of... Have we got strong minds? Have the players got that good mindset to improve on that horrific performance today? Pull through and be strong and get that result that I know we can get against Crew Alexander. So yeah, that is it from me today. I'm glad I didn't pay extra for a ticket today, but yeah, I wouldn't have turned down the opportunity even if we did lose 5-0. It would have just been great to be in that away end with the Reds fans, but yeah. I think the less said about today, the better. We move on to Crew Alexander on Saturday. I mean, I must give a round of applause to Stockport. They sounded lethal in front of goal. We know the quality they had going into this game, and they've shown it. They've got a real good squad in their hands. Dave Chaloner, I mean... Rex and Vans were crying out to get him when Dean Keats did get the sack, but he's done a great job at Stockport County, and I'm sure we'll see them in probably the top three, top four minimum. Best of luck for the rest of the season, and we'll be hoping to get our revenge on the final day of the season. So yeah, if you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, drop a comment what your thoughts on the game were, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. And after a 5-0 defeat, we've got to remain strong up the town.